You're listening to Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Hello and welcome to episode 58 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. So I am neither showing excitement or disappointment right now. Why? Because of my Jerk of the Week segment. I didn't want to show any emotion towards it. Okay, so why do you bring that up now? (laughs) (laughs) Why not? Are we doing Jerk of the Week right now? No. We'll do it later. Okay, so why do you bring that up then? Because I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> That's heck of tight. Uh, so, we didn't do this last week because Brandon was gone and Mike filled in for him. So, Nick has a quote that he'd like to give from either a song, a video game, or a um, movie. And Brandon and I have to guess. I'm sorry, John. I don't remember. I'm going to say... I want to say Terminator 2, but I'll say Rambo. I'll say Commando. I'll give a little bit more of the quote. The quote... uh, There's two people having a dialogue. One person says, did you have it? The other person says, I'm sorry, John. I don't remember. I got up and I walked to the cashier. I sat with the best in the world, and I won. Round Rounders. Rounders. Yep. One of my favorite movies. Kind of plays into some of the stories that I'll be telling later in the show. Because mm. I, I played in a poker tournament yesterday. It was $100 buy-in. Ended up playing for like 10 hours. It's a fun day. Uh, I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about it later. But yeah, that's from Rounders. One of the one of my favorite movies of all time. Cool. Yeah. And he said that to Johnny Chan. Johnny Chan, Chan right? yeah. yeah. He's telling a story to... Um, John Turturro's character yeah. about how, you know, it, it, it basically gave him the confidence to play with the best in the world, and that's kind of how he made the decision to go as a professional poker player rather than pursue, uh, I think he was like a law student, yeah, and he decided to give that up in order to pursue a career in poker. Who wouldn't? <laughs> so, want to go into treasure hunting? Yep. All right. How many items do you have? Uh, four. Dang, okay, I have three. Go ahead and show your first two. Ooh, a Sega game. Haven't seen one of these in a while. Oh, Vector Man 2. <laughs> Was that like seven, eight bucks? Yeah, nine, ten. Nine. See how it said they wrote Vector Man 2 on here? Yeah. One ninety nine price tag. Oh, so you didn't have to do a switch. Why'd they even bother writing it then? I don't know. Retards, I guess. <laughs> this one, I have to clean up a little bit. Oh, it's a 64 game for four ninety nine, and it's all red. <laughs> it looks like someone took a marker to it. Killer Instinct Gold? 20 bucks. No way. Yep. That's pretty tight. So here's my first item. I bet you thought I thought this was an ordinary bundle of toilet paper. <laughs> No, I knew you'd know what it was. You have to unwrap it like it's Christmas. <laughs> oh, Spyro Year of the Dragon with the holographic cover. That's hecka awesome. What's that word? 18. Wow. Here's my next item. Ooh, Resident Evil 2 with... Is it the Dual Shock no, Edition? It's oh. the rarer one. Oh, the black it, label. What's this worth? If it was complete, twenty five. Oh no! no book. It has no book, but you probably still get twenty out of it. You want me to show my next two? Yes. Now this one, I went to the bank this morning on my bicycle, and then I decided to roam around the neighborhood looking for yard sales, which I found. Uh, an elderly couple were se- selling some stuff. I told Brad this is a, kind of an obscure item. 
Zelda Four Swords Adventure. Why is that obscure? Because of what's inside. Tetris DS? Yep. It was like that. Uh, someone put Tetris DS in with a Zelda Four Swords game. So I said, how much for the game? And then they wanted 15, but I talked them down to 10. And then that D the the Tetris DS game was an added bonus. I didn't know it was in there. How much is that worth? That's the the four swords were 34, and the Tetris were 10. Shh. All right. So you obviously won, or did I? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sonic Adventure for Dreamcast. Oh, it's the Sega Greatest Hits version. I didn't know they had Greatest Hits version. <laughs> Let me see. How can you tell it's orange? It's a Sega All-Stars in there. Oh, yeah, I didn't know that. Either. That's cool. So mine totaled 51. What's yours total? 44, 64. Okay, that's enough. Yeah. All right, so at least I get to pick my punishment. Or are we doing punishments anymore? I don't care. Yeah, we're, we've got to do one. <laughs> I roll... Six. Four tackle with the Arabic weasel. Which he still owe. <laughs> Taxi. Seven. Buttercup. Oh, I get to choose, huh? Yeah. Oh, taxi. Okay. Here's yours. Six. Four tackle. <laughs> Eight. Ass punch. <laughs> One. Ten dollar treasure bank. Treasure bank. <laughs> All right. So we know that our uh, pages have been increasing in likes and views and talking about. So go ahead and please still like us on Facebook. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. We've got our first 21 podcasts on there. I would be able to do more, but it takes like a whole half a day to load one podcast onto YouTube, which I don't even know why, because it has to convert it to a MP4 and all this crap. Uh, so subscribe to us on YouTube. We'll have all of our episodes up there shortly. Uh, and also, we uh, got a deal, we're trying to get a deal with Onnit.com, which is a, a herbal supplement site website. They have lots of cool stuff like Alpha Brand and T1, testosterone increase, things like that. So we'll let you know when that's up and running. You could get a discount and, and help us keep this podcast free. And also, we're talking to um, one of our high school friends. I actually messaged uh, Kristen. Uh, McCandless last night because she's doing the Real Linda Community Theater and I was seeing if they had anything where we could sponsor them where they'll put us in like their um, programs and stuff when they do plays so she's going to have a meeting with her fellow heads of that and get back to us. That'd be cool if we could do a live version on the theater before yeah. their play Yeah, or after we'll probably headline. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, go ahead and get the, get the word out. Tell your friends about us if you haven't already. Let's get some likes, and uh, we'll go ahead and you know keep bringing you guys the good podcasts, good quality podcasts, and most of them out there. So when you were talking about on it, was the Stone Cold Steve Austin read going through your head too? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> I don't care if you how old you are, <laughs> if you're over forty. And you were milk, you need to boost your testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> if you see something with two legs and tits walk by, <laughs> your flag will be at full staff. <laughs> I want to try that Alpha Brain, but it's so expensive. Is it? Yeah, it's like 40 bucks a bottle. Isn't it supposed to like make you more focused or something like that? Yeah, he says, if you're smart, it'll make you smarter faster. If you're dumb, <laughs> it'll make you dumber faster. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna go best open this top five. Let's do it. Best open this top five's cherry. Um, top five we're doing this week are top five sexiest girls in video games. Let me go ahead and roll to see who's gonna start us off. Nick gets a four. I get a five. Brandon gets a nine. So with my top five, what I'm going to do is name a genre of video game, like racing, action, adventure, and you guys are going to have to guess the female I chose. Okay. With a genre? Yeah. 
Couldn't be pretty tough. But <laughs> yeah. <okay>. I, I, <laughs> uh, I only did one woman per genre, which was really hard because I wanted to do a lot of fighting games. <laughs> uh, so, number five, RPG. I don't want to, because the, some of mine are from RPGs, and I don't want to pick it and spoil it. Uh, I'm just going to say Eris. Uh, Blue. Who's Blue? From Breath of Fire. <laughs> that's probably not it. Oh, not that's a good one. <laughs> no, I picked Lulu from Final Fantasy X. Uh, it was said before, the second greatest black mage in the Final Fantasy series. Number one, obviously, being Vivi. Um... Very voluptuous and can cast <laughs> magic from her hands. And she carries her own kitschy dolls and cactuary dolls. And she brings out items from her cleavage. Oh, Got does she? phoenix downs in her tits. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> so reach down and pull it out and throw it on someone. Oh, yeah, that's another bonus. So that's my number five, Lulu. I have a sound clip for my number five. Ooh. It's the, the smooth tones of... <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh man, I get hard every time I hear that. B. God, yes. <laughs> She's so sexy, and you know that voice just gets your cock hard. <laughs> Draw me. <laughs> She's so blue. <laughs> Sophie is the Link sidekick from Skyward Sword. She's a female spirit with a killer body and a seductive accent. She's actually the spirit of the goddess sword itself. Fee's abilities are used by Link when he douses areas to discover hidden secrets and information. Yeah, she's blue. She has no pupils. And she never changes the expression on her face. But she's just playing a little hard to get with Link. <laughs> that mouth is always open. <laughs> you guys ever watch Bones? No. That retarded... TV show with the guy from uh, Angel. Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Yeah, nah. -uh. <laughs> well, Doctor Bones kind of reminds me of Fee. Uh, Doctor Bones is played by Emily Deschanel, the hotter of the Deschanel sisters, of course. Zoe's a fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know she had a sister. Yeah, she looks like her. That's she's the hotter one for sure. Zoe's got those big, retarded eyes. But Dr. Bones speaks and behaves in a manner that would indicate that all of her decisions are based on logic and statistics. But just like how Booth, played by Angel, as you had mentioned, eventually broke down Bones' walls, both literally and figuratively, oh, man. you know Fee is just waiting for a real man to break that seal. Fee showed off some graceful dance moves and sung some enchanting songs to Link. She made it seem like all this was part of Link's mission, but she was really just trying to get into Link's pants. So that's my number five is Fee from yeah. Zelda Skyward Sword. And he's none the wiser. <laughs> very naive, that one. But <laughs> yeah. very courageous. Number five on my list, I'm going to take it back. Game called Azure Dreams. Oh, man. That whole cast. Well, <laughs> mainly one, but... The one I picked was Nico. She's got long green hair that's begging to be pulled. When you get to visit the pool, you get to see her in a bikini. <laughs> She's got some nice round features, too. So that was my number five. Number four, sports. Venus Williams. Oh. <laughs> Is she in virtual tennis? I don't know. Oh. Probably. I'm sure she's in some tennis game. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> is she in WWF game? I think she is. I wasn't sure, but I put the cast of the Dead or Alive Beach Volleyball. <laughs> Hitomi, Ayani, Tina, Leifang, Helena, not so much Helena. This game is obviously catered towards males. I've only seen it played by one other person, or seen it played by one person, John Rushing, a former Dragon Ball consort. 
basically you play these ridiculous games as well as volleyball. You will have to play mini games like jump rope, bounce from lily pad to lily pad while they're in their scantily clad bikinis, and they just bounce everywhere. <laughs> Wasn't John impressed that each boob moved on their own yes. axis? <laughs> so instead of like being go to go, they'd be like going all over the place. <laughs> Depending on gravity, yeah, it's really realistic. <laughs> uh, my number four is Princess Zelda herself. Um, in her 8 bit form, she wasn't too easy on the eyes, but Link loved watching her sleep in the adventures of Link. She really blossomed in Ocarina of Time when she, in the guise of a mysterious man named Sheik, she actually helped Link to defeat Ganondorf. Zelda's big ears aren't really my thing, but her long blonde hair, big blue eyes, and killer body are a bit of alright. Her fashion sense is that of royalty, which is a nice change of pace. She has respect for herself and allows Link to get under her royal gown only after he has rescued the kingdom of Hyrule from certain disaster. She's also incredibly wise, which would explain why she carries the Triforce of Wisdom. I'd like to see her put that wisdom to work in the bedroom with some creative ways to use that red <laughs> candle of Lynx. So that's my number four. Number four, it's been said before, Mai from the Fatal Fury series. Uh, two big obvious reasons, of course. <laughs> Very big obvious reasons. I always picked her just so I could watch them bounce around when I was fighting and they'd distract me and I'd always lose because I wouldn't be focusing on the fight. <laughs> <laughs> that was my number four. Number three on my list, Adventure. Adventure? I'm going to say Samus. That's a good one. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. Laura Croft. Ah, from Tomb Raider. Not really that sexy. She could probably make a good sandwich. I don't doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> she's That's, got a British accent, though. I don't like her for her accent. <laughs> and I've never heard her speak. Oh, okay. Have you heard her speak? Yeah, she speaks in a couple of them. Oh. Uh, as long as she keeps quiet, she could make me a sandwich. <laughs> A cock meat sandwich. <laughs> That's all I have to say about Laura. Just silence her. Be done yeah. with it. <laughs> My number three is uh, from Final Fantasy VI, General Celeste. She's a gen genetically enhanced Magitek knight who defects from the G Gestalian Empire to join the Returners. She is the thief, Locke Cole's love interest. Uh, she has long blonde hair, blue eyes, and pale skin. She wears yellow and purple armor with high boots and wields a sword. Her appearance is nice, but in this case it's her mysterious personality and stubbornness that makes her sexy. At first she refuses help from anyone, swearing that she's independent and needs no one. However, she comes to rely on Locke and after the world is thrown into chaos, Celeste, Celeste attempts to uh, commit suicide when she believes that Locke is dead. You know she's a little twisted if she's ready to commit suicide for... That piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's a treasure hunter. He's a thief. <laughs> <laughs> so basically my point is, you know she's a little twisted, so she might be up for doing some twisted stuff. In oh, bed. yeah, no doubt. <laughs> Maybe get a little half Esper action in there. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Bismarck. <laughs> the whale? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking more Chandler, but okay. <laughs> That's my number three. Number three on my list is also going to go to a Legend of Zelda character, but it's going to be Midna, the Twilight Princess. <laughs> Not the mischievous pixie form, but the princess form. She's got long red hair, she's dark and mysterious, so you know she'd be into some BDSM. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> number two on my list, <coughs> puzzle genre. Nurse Mario. Oh, I don't know. I'm just kidding. I don't have a clue. L Block from Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Morgan, the succubus from the Darkstalker series. <laughs> Loophole. <laughs> she was in a game called Puzzle Fighter. That was like Tetris Attack, where you battled against someone else. But she's a succubus. Like I said, she has wings, horns. And can make a doppelganger of herself. Every cosplayer's fantasy. She even <laughs> has a little demonic sexy tail. 
My number two is Chun Li. The first lady of Street Fighter had the speed and skills to counter all of her male counterparts. As impressive as her lightning kick and spinning bird kick moves are, her sexy legs and alluring attire are what put her on this list. She wears a blue Chinese dress, she wears white combat boots, brown pantyhose, and some sexy blue panties. In later games, Chun Li wears a unitard that covers her legs, but no matter what, there's no way that she can hide those long, thick legs. Chun Li's hair is always up in a bun, so there's no telling how long her brown hair really is. I suspect that when Ken puts the moves on her, she lets her hair down while she gives those legs a nice workout. That's right. <laughs> so that's my number two. Number two on my list has already been mentioned before. It's Lulu from Final Fantasy. Nothing beats big guns and a tight corset <laughs> to show off your goods. <laughs> Every time she bent, bends over after she wins a fight, her boobs shake a little bit. <laughs> you know she does that shit on purpose. <laughs> And she looks at you right through the TV screen, too. I put her number two on. She, she didn't make my number one because we have an aunt who calls herself Lulu. So every time I kind of, in the back of my head, it's always there. I was like, oh, no, not Auntie Barbara again. And she showed us a picture of her vagina. You, not me. I didn't get to see it. Wait, your aunt did this? That's fucking at, gross. At a barbecue um, about five years ago, me... Karen and my mom went over there to have a reunion, which didn't work out so well. It, just, <laughs> it, it took away all the magic of being a kid when I was over there. She she just discovered her picture phone could take pictures, and she was like, look, a scuba mask. And it was a, lips getting pulled over this guy's face. That's how stretched out it was. And it was my Uncle Bully. Oh, man. Which was her late husband's brother. I don't know how to react to that. It's very disturbing. <laughs> it is. And she just thought that she was so cool showing everybody that picture. I don't think we're going to get sponsored. <laughs> 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 I don't think the Rolanda Alberta Community Theater is going to want us to sponsor them. Well, it is Rolanda. <laughs> incest, you know. That's true. <laughs> so that's my number two. Number one, Brad mentioned, I'm just going to say it, my Shiranui. Uh, from the fighting game King of Fighters slash Fatal Fury. She's very bodacious. The only woman to ever give me a boner while I was controlling her. <laughs> As a 13-year-old boy in a laundromat. Uh, my number one is Tifa from Final Fantasy VII for two big obvious reasons. That's right. <laughs> uh, so in the game, Cloud had a decision to make, Eris or Tifa. I think Cloud was thinking long-term relationship when he fell in love with Eris. For this list where we're determining the hottest broad, Tifa wins. Tifa's the kind of girl who you'd die just to have one night with. Eris is the kind of girl a guy could see raising a family with. You feel me? Yep. Tifa's tough, independent, and opti optimistic. She has long brown hair, huge fun bags, and can usually be seen in a sleeveless white shirt that exposes her midriff in a super skimpy black skirt with suspenders. She fights without a weapon, and she slays monsters left and right. Just imagine what she could do in bed. That's my number one, is Tifa Lockhart. They call them fun bags because they're fun to play with. Yes, that's okay. true. I just made that connection. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say jugs, but I thought fun bags would be a bit better. Number one on my list is going to have to go to Bayonetta. The most sexy, sultry, and sassy witch. She can use giant am animals she summons to eat her foes. There's just no going away from those glasses, that outfit, and that long black hair. <laughs> it's my number one. I never played that game. I, I only picked uh, characters from games that I've actually played, so that's why my list is somewhat stock. But... Yeah, I've never played any of the Dead or Alive games either, so I didn't pick any of those. Honorable mentions? I've got a couple. Midna. I like Midna. Uh, Jill Valentine yeah. from Resident Evil 3 because she's got a, a sweater tied around her waist. You know what that means. She's on a period. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know being on your period made you sexy. It does in my book. Uh, Why? Because that's when the females are the most sensitive. <laughs> you like, like to get the red rust going on? I, I like rare steak. <laughs> uh, 
That reminds me of uh, that Motley Crue book. Oh, yeah. Um, the, the Dirt. Yeah. Weren't you the one that told me about that? Like how he would go down on girls when they were on their period or whatever? <laughs> yeah. It's not nice. <laughs> that's some rare tang right there. <laughs> yeah, Karen will let me do it. She's like, no, that's gross. <laughs> I don't want to. <laughs> Uh, another honorable mention I had was Aya Bree from the Parasite Eve series. Yeah, I thought about her. She was pretty cool. That game was heck of fun, too. The Samus wasn't on anyone's list. No, I was going for more people who's, like, sexy. Samus is more petite. She's blonde. I don't really like blonde girls. Um, I like, like I said with Brandon, she could probably make a nice sandwich, but <laughs> other than that... <laughs> she could probably kill you, too. She, she could go in the little morph ball. <laughs> that, that'd be... Make some fun experiences. <laughs> I wanted to ask you guys, we're done with this top five. Uh, if you could have any WWE shirt made or taken from one of their ro wardrobes, what would that be? If you want, I could start off. Yeah. I thought it'd be hecka cool to get Luke Harper's <laughs> tank top. <laughs> the dirty tank top? Yeah. You could make that yourself. <laughs> Not His is like hecka long, and it's already gray, and it's got that sweat puddle. And he's got he, a ton of them. Do you think he uses the same one every time? I would hope so. Really? But he well, that one day it ripped, and he, the next event he had the same one. Oh, was really? it ripped? Yeah, it, someone ripped it off of him. Like, I, ripped it down the front. And and he wore it ripped? No, he had oh. a different one on. Oh, so then he must have a stock full of them. <laughs> Cheap white tank top? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, probably easy to find them. <laughs> I know we've got our Bo Dallas shirts ready for SummerSlam. Yeah. Yeah. We, if we didn't, I'd get a gray, dirty tank top. I'd wear it this whole month, like whenever I was off work, or even <laughs> when I'm at work, and just not wash it. Or just have Jordan wear it to football practice. Yeah. <laughs> and then wear it to SummerSlam. We could get uh, Eric Rowan's jumpsuits from Denios. <laughs> <laughs> when I went there with Jamila a few weeks ago, I said, oh, it's a Jason uh, jumpsuit, Jason Voorhees. And she was like, she just rolled her eyes. <laughs> That's like a tight. I'm trying to think of a good one, but it, all, all, I, all I keep thinking of is that question on uh, Heaven or Hell about the, the worst wrestling shirt of all time. <laughs> Curtis Axel's shirt. Almost perfect. <laughs> no, better than perfect. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's what I keep thinking of. I still don't know how the Andre the Giant sling beat out the awesome shirt. The awesome shirt? We oh. said the worst one was awesome. For the oh, because Brandon was the judge. Of yeah. It. it was so funny because as soon as like you sat down, I was like, oh, shit. I know he loves uh, <laughs> Mr. Perfect. That's 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 the shirt he's going to want to hear. And I just couldn't. I didn't have time to whisper it into your ear. Because that Andre the Giant sling is just so stupid looking. I just think that you wanted to give the underdog points. No, that, they, that hit the nail right on the head if it wasn't the awesome oh, shirt. Okay. <laughs> I'm starting to come around on Miz, so maybe it'd be cool to have one of his shirts. Uh, Seth Rollins battle suit vest that he wears. <laughs> I'm thinking t-shirts, but yeah, if you're going to go wardrobe, those are pretty cool. <laughs> Roman Reigns' uh, little battle vest is pretty cool, too. Ambrose wears a tank top, too. Maybe he took direction from Harper. <laughs> his is a more high-class one, though. Yeah, it's not dirty. <laughs> it's like Nordstrom's quality. Luke. Uh, Luke Harper is more like Walmart, Goodwill quality, <laughs> thrift, uh, Folsom flea market. <laughs> Bray Wyatt's Hawaiian shirts are pretty cool too. Yeah, with his hat, I like that hat he wears. Yeah. Jerk of the week. So we're gonna do it different this time. I'm not gonna explain who the jerk is. What I'm gonna do is give a scenario, and Nick is going to have to. Oh man. Oh, man. Guess <laughs> who the jerk is. Well, I have questions for him. But. I'm going to guess beforehand that it's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nick Jones. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> you know Brad and I. <laughs> <laughs> You know, we wheel and deal on eBay. We sell video games, buy video games, sell Dragon Ball cards, buy Dragon Ball cards. 
We hardly buy video games on eBay. Yeah. Just sell them. So, there was an Dude, item. You got like two pages there. <laughs> Four. I feel like I'm being interrogated. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so, there were there was an item either sold or bought by me that had a defect. And this is the initial... Here, I'm just going to do the read the messages. It was a, a, a lot of Dragon Ball cards. So about 1,500 Dragon Ball cards. This is the initial email to the seller. July 19th, 3.37 p.m. Hello, I just received the cards. They were actually in horrible shape and reeked of cigarette smoke. I had to throw most of them away. I did manage to find about 150 that did not stink as bad. Is there any way I could get a partial refund since I was, since I want to keep a handful of them? Reply from the seller. Same day, 4.30 p.m. May I remind you it is against eBay policy to ask for a partial refund? I don't smoke, so it was from the previous owner. Much as with trading cards, there are worthless ones and good or even great ones. So, what is your thought on a refund? The unwanted cards will have to be returned. Thank you. Reply to the seller, same day, two minutes later. I will return them. My issue was that you listed them in excellent condition. Most of them were in bad shape. The next day, no, two days pass. 7.21 at 7.12 a.m. Message to the seller. Hello, is this the correct return address? It gives a return address. And then this is reply from the seller. For, capitalized. Then, at that time, the buyer sent the link of the option to the seller, reminding them of what had transpired two days earlier. Reply from the seller, 721 at 1035. I sold them as is, not going to let you send back the bad ones and keep the good ones. You will have to refer to eBay as a mail, as a mail email asking for partial refund for your return is exempt. Sorry, but they were sold as is and if 150 were good, you still got a good deal. You also state you had to throw some of them out already. Appreciate your bidding. Thank you. Wow. At this point in time, the buyer opens up a case against the seller, wanting eBay to get involved. The details provided from the case opened from the buyer. The item does not match the seller's description. The item was paid for on July 13, 2014. Additional information to eBay and to the seller. Hello, I'm opening a case for the following reason. You listed the cards, and I quote, most are in excellent condition. I received the cards, and they all reek of cigarette smoke. That does not fit your description. Nowhere in your description did you say as is. You even stated in a message when I offered to return them, may I remind you it is against eBay policy to ask for a partial refund? I don't smoke, so it was from the previous owner. Much as was with sports cards, there are worthless ones and great ones. So what is your thought on the refund? End quote. Seller responded, saying, eBay said not to issue refund in this case. Buyer responds, you stated the cards are in excellent condition. They are not. Seller responds, I'm not sure what makes these not in excellent condition. Might as well have eBay decide. Feel free to escalate the case. You've already said you've thrown them out. As I know it's against eBay policy to request a partial refund, I will have to call them again to see if I can just offer you a few bucks just because I don't need stress. <laughs> they were sold as is, and I know nothing about them as stated in the auction. I am not looking to screw anyone over. It's just the amount of non-paying bidders and just plain scammers on eBay that's out of control. Buyer responds. Do you honestly think the cards that reek of cigarette smoke count as excellent condition? You were dishonest in your listing. That's my gripe. Even if you know nothing of the cards, quote unquote, you can at least deduce the fact that they that they shouldn't smell like cigarettes. You stated before that you would accept the return and then backed out of your word. I was mistaken when I said I threw them out, 
They were still in your smoke-filled box sitting next to my dresser, and they are still with me. I will be more than happy to let Eva decide once I escalate the case in three days. Seller responds, Okay, I smell no smoke. You could be sending back your junk cards sold as is. From the buyer, Really? You admit the cards smell of smoke and a few messages back to me. Come on now, you are pathetic. <laughs> Seller says, Never said that. In fact, I said I don't smoke. So if it was from a previous owner, it was from them. Don't read what's not there, sir. You still tried a partial refund against eBay return and policy. Response from buyer. I'm sorry, but you did say that. You said, I don't smoke. It was from the previous seller. No if. Read it again. I'm only asking for a partial refund because I didn't want for you to be out all of the money. Now we'll let eBay side with me in three days and I'll get a full refund. Make sure you're truthful in your descriptions after this incident so this does not happen again. Seller says, once again, I smell no smoke. Never said for sure it was from a previous owner. I never knew who it was. Bought at auction. Response from seller again. And you admitted throwing cards out and going through and taking out only the good ones. You also broke eBay rules requesting for a partial refund. I, I'm supposed to believe you were just trying to be nice. More like a swindler. Please refrain from any more email. This is your warning. More harassment constitutes harassment by law and eBay rules. Response from buyer. I have uploaded photos of your product you sent to me. We'll let eBay decide in two days. Photographic evidence that was downloaded. <laughs> so go ahead and swipe. Yeah, all those cards are supposed to be white. Smoke-free cards from my personal collection. Notice they are not yellow. Distorted yellow smoke damaged cards received from seller. All are like this. Okay. Seller says, that's not the point. You broke eBay return rules on re refunds. Auction had auction picks had edge picks on my auction. You saw the condition. You just want to keep a few and ship the rest back. This is the escalation email to eBay. Tried to return majority of cards to seller since they were smoke damaged and not in excellent condition. Seller agreed before I opened the case. Then when I asked for a return address the next day, he said I was in breach of eBay law for wanting partial refund and refused the refund. As you can see by the pictures, I posted the cards as unusable due to the fact that they reek of smoke. I did not know asking for a partial refund was against policy. I only did so because I wanted, was able to salvage, salvage about 150 of the cards. Now, who is the jerk of the week? You're saying who is the seller or the, the seller or the buyer is the jerk of the week? Yes, in your opinion. Well, uh, on one hand, I would, we have, say, I would say the buyer is the jerk of the week. The one who bought the cards and wants to get the refund. Correct. Okay. What do you think the outcome was? Uh, I think the buyer probably just had to hold on to the cards and got no refund. So you're saying eBay sided with the buyer? No, eBay sided with the seller. Okay, that's right. Now, was I the buyer or the seller? I would say that you're probably the seller. The buyer was me. <laughs> <laughs> I got a full refund. Wow. Got to keep the cards. And the seller, DS Flipper, can eat shit. <laughs> <laughs> Was that your handwriting? Yes. I didn't recognize it. Yeah, I didn't recognize it either. I, I know, because I did that with intent of doing it on the podcast, so I changed it. That's a double cross. <laughs> That's what threw me off. <laughs> so, DS Flipper, you are a jerk of the week, and you have too much stress in your life, apparently. So... Thanks for the $47 and for the card that just won $70 on auction and we're still continuing to sell cards out of that 150 to make a profit. Fuck you. So what, you got to keep the cards and you got to yeah. refund? Yes. I tried to return them, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't accept them. So I opened up a, poly, uh, I opened up a case 
eBay said, keep the cards, keep the money. So what they do in that case is they give me the money and then take it from his take account. Take it from him, yeah. <laughs> and so, um, <laughs> what, what, did, what did he do that was so wrong? I mean, he, just because he said it was excellent condition mm -hmm. and didn't mark that. Because there's one card that he's showing. He doesn't know nothing about the cards. There's one card you could see that's worth between 60 and 80. So Brad and I bid on it for, we won it for $35 and 10 shipping. So $45, $46. So all the cards look pretty good condition. But when we got them, they just reeked of cigarettes. As soon smoke. as you opened the box, it was like smoke. Like he took a puff of a cigarette and blew it in the box and then sealed it. But fortunately, some of those cards were in hard plastic cases, so those got protected from the smoke. So those are the ones we wanted to keep. And what Brad did, well, we threw them away in the in the plastic bag at the sharing place. It was like McDonald's and stuff. So I said, um, bring them, bring me the bag. We'll get them out. He'll he'll accept a refund or a return. So we. Take him out, nothing was wrong with him, put him back in the box, and then he went right up the return. Because what we were going to do is take those few that we could sell individually and sell them as individual cards and then sell them as a bulk. So like, add all the ones that are not worth as much and just put them like a 2,000 card lot and sell them online. Right. For uh, more profit, but... They we, just would smell too bad of smoke. Yeah. I, there's no way he didn't know that smelled like smoke. So we can't sell, we sell Dragon Ball cards that smell like smoke because people will complain like I did. So we had to get rid of them. We even bought a lot yesterday. We got like 4,000 cards and about, I'd say 1,000 were smoke damaged because they were from different people and we, we just throw them away because mm -hmm. we don't want to put that stuff on eBay. But I'm saying to, to what... To what degree does the seller have to disclose that they are damaged? I mean, was the fact that he said they were in excellent condition what won you the case? Yeah, yeah. because you have to put if they're damaged in any way, smoke damage, water damage, any type of dam damage on there. Like, if you're going to sell something, you have to look at it and make sure it's what you're selling. Like, my cards, when I put online, I'll say, I uh, have, you know, most are in great condition, some are in used condition, played condition. And even if they truly don't like it, if they, if, as long as they give me the cards back, I'll refund them. And this guy just didn't want to play ball, I guess. He thought he was going to try to throw policies at you. Yeah, uh, the the pictures that he had on there, they looked fine, but they were, of course, like far away pictures, not the ones like I took. So they looked fine up up close, but then when you got them, they were just bad. So if you were just to hold one single card and not like have it. You know, stacked up so that you can see mm. the ends of it. Just by looking at it, you know, from top down, you'd be able to tell that it wasn't a good card. Yeah, if it's showing the side, yeah, because it's yellow. That's how mm. you can tell if it stinks. So, um, what if he had just said cards are in fair condition? Would that have swayed the case? I wouldn't have opened the case. If he said fair, no. Yeah. But saying excellent condition, that's like new. Yeah. Mm. So this is episode 58. That means episode 60 is going to be my game show. Yeah. Uh, when, did, when did we want to do that? Maybe on SummerSlam? Summer That'd be tight. We could have an intoxicated episode because we'll probably be intoxicated oh. by the time we do that. Oh, the <laughs> odds might, might not be in your favor then. <laughs> <laughs> you might shock us a little too long too. Well, this is, <laughs> this is, a, this is how it's going to go down. First part of the game show... It's going to be a normal game show. It's not going to be... It's going to be more of like Shock Me Another where you have categories and you have two subcategories. And then you guys pick one and I read you all the questions and you'll go from there. The second part of the show is a lightning round. That's when you, you get asked 12 questions with the Shockmaster going with all four pads on you. Oh, fuck. <laughs> and you could either say... If you don't know, you could say pass... I don't know, but you get as long as you want to answer that question. Oh, man. And, <laughs> and as many tries as you want as well. Hmm. I wanted to reveal the categories. We have animals, subcategories, you cold-blooded, man, cold-blooded, and I'm hot-blooded, 
hot blooded. <laughs> BJ words. <laughs> First category is B. Answers that start with B. Second category is J. Answers that start with J. Third category, Brad knows. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Subcategories, animals and potpourri. Next category, treasure hunting for nostalgia. First category, I'm not going to say. Second category, I'm not going to say. Oh, man. Next category, movies. Quotes one. Next category, quotes two. All, Brad Nose only has four questions per category, because I know you guys don't like Brad Nose, but I think it's going to be hilarious. Um, and every other category has between five and seven questions. Lightning Round is going to consist of 12 questions, but you're going to have to Man, ride the, the lightning. lightning. That's right. <laughs> you're not going to reveal the categories on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have a bit of a jerk of the week. So, um, I as I'd mentioned earlier in the episode, uh, I played in a one hundred dollar buy in tournament yesterday over at my friend Brian's house. Brian's been on the show before. He was the one who was not affected by the Shockmaster. <laughs> uh, it was a fun tournament. It, it probably went longer than it should have. They they played with uh, thirty minute blind levels. The tournament ended up lasting like eight hours. And there Holy was only, shit! There's only like 15 players, so the the pot wasn't really that big. I think first place got like 700. Wow. Uh, second got like 400. Third got like 200, and like fourth got their money back or something like that. I can't remember exactly how it was uh, divvied up. What time did it start? It started at two o'clock. I uh, may I guess it only went seven hours because I think it ended around nine. Oh. Uh, I lasted pretty long. Uh, I did pretty good. Uh, I busted out on a hand. Uh, I had like 12 or 13 big blinds left. I think there was like seven players left. So I was pretty close to cashing. A bunch of people limped in uh, and the blinds were pretty big. Like I said, I only had 13 big blinds left. A bunch of people limped in. I was in the big blind. I had an ace. It was a small ace. It was ace three offsuit. And I was thinking about it and I was just like, well, uh, there's so much dead money in there. If I just shove right all in right here, the, all these guys limp, they probably don't have very strong hands. Uh, I can just take, you know, I, I can add, increase my stack by like four or five big blinds right here. So that's a pretty big uh, boost. So I go ahead and shove it all in. Uh, one of the players did call me. Uh, it's actually my brother-in-law, Tim. <laughs> he called me. Former with, jerk of the week. <laughs> <laughs> he called me with pocket sixes. And the, it was sick, too, because like I said, I was in the big blind, so I could have just checked it. But the flop came 6-3-3, three, three, and I had ace-3. Uh, so even if I had just checked and not shoved all in, I still would have lost all my money because I flopped trip threes, and he flops a full house with sixes full of threes. So I, it, regardless of how it actually did happen, I would have busted out on that hand anyways. It didn't really matter. But that was fun. And right after that, we uh, started a cash game. A uh, bunch of the people who had already busted out, we played a $1, $1 blind game. I bought in for 60 and I lost my 60 bucks pretty quick. I bought in for another 60, uh, doubled up, and then uh, doubled that up as well. So I was up to 240 or so and I ended up cashing out like 295. So I was actually in for the tournament for 100. Mm -hmm. I was into the cash game for 120 and I cashed out 290. So I was actually up seventy dollars on the day, so I was two hundred twenty in and I cashed out two ninety. That's good. So, yeah, I was I was actually quite pleased with that. But my jerk of the week is this guy named Devin. He's a guy that uh, my friend Don has a lot of uh, poker games in real end, and I always go to. They they play much higher stakes than I'm really comfortable with, but I always play with them just because I think it's fun. I just play super tight. I don't really gamble with them too much. But this guy is. A gambler and he thinks he's the shit too he he thinks he's like the best poker player ever but every single time i see him play he'll get up by like a few hundred bucks and by, by the end of the night he's busted he must have sat down with johnny chen <laughs> in this situation he got into a hand early with brian uh brian doesn't know him very well i tried to warn him that a lot of these the guys that were coming to this tournament because i helped brian and uh, hank uh, recruit some players 
I warned them that a lot of the guys there are, are gamblers. They don't necessarily go get in with the, pre, the premium type of hands. So it turned out that the flop, uh, there was it was Devin versus Brian. And Brian had ace something, and Devin had ten deuce. Like, he raised pre-flop with ten deuce. In a Fucking turn- serious? In a tournament. Like, that's... I mean, it's okay if you're just trying to make a move, you're trying to steal blinds or whatever, that's fine. You can do whatever you want. And the flop came like ace something deuce. And again, this guy bet it, Brian called, and it got down to the river, and the river was another deuce. So the guy bet Devin, this guy bet huge, Brian ended up calling him, and he showed his 10 deuce, and Brian was like, what the fuck is that? Because <laughs> he just couldn't put him on anything. He had a, he had an ace, he had two aces, which is a pretty strong hand. So anyway, uh, later, like I said, this guy, he gambles a lot, so he's going to lose chips doing shit like that as well. Uh, eventually, he got really short. And we're, we're asking everyone to shuffle their own decks. So he was shuffling the deck and it slipped out of his hand and a few of the cards fell on the ground. And he said, God damn it! <laughs> and everyone was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so this guy, he's kind of insane to go along with his crazy gambling style. He hits the table violently. He says, God damn it. And he's yelling all other sorts of obscenities. And, all, and meanwhile, all he did was just drop some cards on the ground. <laughs> About a minute or two later... He gets into a situation where he's all in, and the person behind him has pocket kings. So, of course, uh, it's a woman. Her name's Jen. She calls him with the pocket kings. He gets hecka mad. That's hecka mad. He's all, this fucking bullshit. What the fuck is this shit? (laughs) And, and like, less than 30 seconds later, he's out the door. He doesn't say bye to anyone. doesn't say thank you to anyone. Because, you know, Brian's opening his house to all these people. You should at least say thank you. He was providing drinks. Uh, He had a shitload of Coke, of course, because he works for Coca-Cola. But, uh, yeah, he's just not not gracious at all, just very upset because he thinks he's the best. So that's my jerk of the week. Uh, This guy in particular, his name's Devin. He's my jerk of the week. But it really goes out to any poker player who has too big of a head. Even if you're the best player in the world, you're not going to win every tournament. There's just too much luck involved. You just have to keep a level head when you're playing poker. Even if you're better than the opposition, you're just not going to win every time. And that's my joke of the week is people who just can't handle those bad beats and the, the bad luck involved with poker. If that if you can't handle it, then you shouldn't be playing poker. So that's my joke of the week. Phil Hellmuth put out a book that I read. Uh-huh. Uh, he described the four different types of poker players. <laughs> uh, hyenas, which it sounds like this guy is, who... Gambles all the time, thinks he's the shit, and then ends up losing. Uh-huh. Lions, who are very strong players. Uh, not quite pros yet, but very strong. They know how to make decisions. Uh, mice, who just keep quiet. They don't re- make reactions and play very tight. And then elephants, people who are loud, rowdy, and <laughs> kind of in between the lion and the, the jackal, but they're still pretty good with the hyena. And then he says there's eagles, which is what... He and his friends are. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Who's soaring above everybody else. And I just found that amusing how whenever I see a poker player like that, I'm like, you fucking jackal. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny. What book was that, do you know? Uh, I don't remember. I have it at home, though. I might want to read that. Mm-hmm. I like reading poker books. Yeah. Helmuth is full of himself. Oh, man. <laughs> he's another guy who thinks he's the best and who gets very mad whenever he gets takes a bad beat. Mike, he gets outplayed. But oh, uh, Mike Matisau. Oh, I oh, hate that man. guy. <laughs> he can't handle it either. No, he can't. So what was um, unethical about that video? I just, Like slow playing? Was that what he was doing? Oh, are you talking about the one with Mike Matisau? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I asked the same thing and got had to get clarification from Nick. Because so, I, I probably would have done the same thing. Oh, you would, Nick. <laughs> yeah, I would have. Really? Yeah. Well, I mean, if it's I a, wouldn't have asked for a chip count. I would have contemplated. If it's a small stakes game, I mean, if you want to do that to be funny. And I, this guy says he was doing it for TV, so I guess he has an excuse. But in general, it's considered it unethical. So what happened was there's a show that's airing on uh, CBS Sports Network. It's called Poker Night in America. It's a televised cash uh, poker cash game. Uh, the, each player buys in for between $5,000 and $20,000, which... It's somewhat small stakes compared to what they used to air on television. They used to have these like hundred thousand dollar to five hundred thousand dollar buy in games. But even still, it's still a lot of money. Five thousand dollars is not you know, it's not chump change. So Mike Matisau gets into this hand with this guy named Sean Deeb 
Mike Mattisau is short stacked. I think he has like three thousand dollars. Sean Deeb has probably around ten thousand dollars. So whatever. Uh, Mike Mattisau raises pre flop with pocket jacks. Sean Deeb calls him with pocket fives. And the flop comes like five five six or something crazy like that. So Sean Deeb flops quads. Mike Mattisau generally pocket jacks are best in that situation, so he bets it. Sean Deeb just smooth calls. He acts like he has a decision to make. He's like involved in all the conversation that's going on at the table. And he call he just calls. He doesn't raise, of course, because he doesn't want to, you know, make the other make Mike Mattisau fold. Uh, the turn card is another blank card. I think it's like a ten or a queen or something like that. But Mike Mattisau just shoves all in right there. So generally, <laughs> what would be considered ethical at this point, because there's no more action to go. That obviously he doesn't need to like Hollywood and act like he has a decision to make. Mm-hmm. He obviously has the best hand. It's the best possible hand for any for any combination of cards. Generally, you just say call. You don't even need to ask for a chip oh, count because okay. there's no decision to make. There, it doesn't matter how much money he has. You're gonna call. So he sat there, and not not only did he he asked for a chip count. So Mike Mattisau shows all his chips out there, and the dealer starts you know stacking up his chips, trying to figure out how, exactly how much it is for uh, Sean Deeb to call. And meanwhile, while Sean Deeb is you know kind of smirking, acting you know making fun of all this, he talks to the other players at the table. Did you notice? Yeah, that? yeah. He says, "I'm slow rolling, Mike." He he talks to the guy across from his um, I can't remember his name right now. Oh, it's Matt Glantz. He says, "I'm slow rolling him." <laughs> and Mike, meanwhile, Mike Mattisau is like he's got his head buried, trying not to give Sean Deeb any sort of tells or a read or anything like that and then he sean deeb even looks to his left and looks at this other player his name is greg mueller and he says hey i'm slow rolling mike <laughs> so everyone 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 is like watching this just knowing that mike madison is about to get fucked <laughs> <laughs> and eventually sean deeb says all right all right i guess i'll call and he, sh- he shows the no first mike madison turns over the two jacks like kind of confidently because he's thinking like you know if he tanked this long he probably doesn't have the best hand so Mike Massa was like, oh, yeah, I'm glad you called. And then, of course, Sean, T- Sean Deeb shows the pocket fives. And he's, Mike Massa was drawn dead. He just lost $3,000. So that's why it's considered unethical. Just because it's, it's not fun to play with people's emotions like that, especially when there's $3,000 at stake. But. I thought it was heck of funny when Mattis was like, I'm going to punch you in the fucking mouth this time. <laughs> yeah, he said, he, he, he went on this rant saying that, you know, he can handle just about any sort of ribbing. He can, he can handle it when you lie to him about what hand you have. He can handle it when you, you know, bluff him out of a pot. But if you slow roll him, he, he's going to punch you right in the fucking mouth. <laughs> That's hilarious. It, 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 I actually just showed you a, uh, like a two or three minute clip of it, but it, he actually goes on for much longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> did he rebuy? He left the game for a while. He threatened to leave the game, and then a bunch of the players went over and talked to him and consoled him and said, "Nah, come on, we're on TV. We're just having fun." Heck, a Even- emo. Eventually, he came back, but it was it was a fun thing for t- television. I'd be fucking pissed. I'd go Jason Johnson on that. <laughs> <laughs> yelling all types of racial slurs, huh? <laughs> oh, gee. <laughs> So that'll do it for episode 58 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. This is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Nick. Happy hunting.